Jarvis, drop my needle. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and we are finally getting back to the Mike Costa Venom run. I wanted to try to clear as many of these as I could this week for you, because obviously I took a little break from Venom stuff, I uh, got behind on things, and episode 700 just took a long time to edit, and with me forgetting stuff and having to go back and tweaking it, it I don't know if I'll do any more one-hour videos. <laughs> I think I'm going to try to keep things more concise and uh, and try to do more things like this so I'm not spending like, you know, days editing something. And even spending days, I like it's not as good as other YouTubers who have days to make stuff look. So like it's there's no real reason for me to take that long, uh, um, you know, outside of just obviously I forget stuff or I'm balancing this with work and everything. And so I'm sorry it took so long to get that video up and then my Morbius reaction and then my Spider-Man reaction. I think I got that up a little quicker. So now I'm getting the pace back and I wanted to come back today and talk about The Land Before Crime. This is the second volume of Mike Costa's run. So we're going to dive into this. There's not much to do, like sink our teeth in, as I like to say, uh, but uh, there's not a lot to like, dis you know, like discuss with this. It's a pretty straightforward story, but it is a fun story. There's a lot of fun in it. And I really enjoy that about this is that uh, that Mike Costa really, I think at this point, is getting the hang of the character, figuring out what kind of story he wants to tell with Eddie and the symbiote. And he starts planting the seeds for that here that continue on for the rest of the run. So in the first issue in this, we've actually already talked about it. It's issue 150 of Venom, and that was written by Mike Costa, but it was also drawn by Trad Moore. Uh, we already covered that in a, in a special episode you know, a while back. So picking up where that left off, now that Eddie's back in the suit, that's where this story begins. And that's called The Land Before Crime. And it's issues 151, 152, and 153. And that's the rest of this book. So you get 150 to 153 in here, but we already talked about 150, so we're just going to talk about the remaining three issues, which has art by Gerardo Sandoval, who was the artist who originally drew this book with Mike Costa when they did the Lee Price storyline. And uh, and so in this story, we get introduced to, well, we already know who Alchemex is and Liz Allen are from Spider-Man Comics and Spider-Man 2099, but we get them introduced to Venom in this run. Uh, basically, there is a creature running around the sewers. Where we last left off, Eddie you know, found out that the priest that he went to talk to, um, who the symbiote felt threatened by uh, his words, I guess, when Eddie went for advice at the church, we, Eddie found out that the priest was injured, and it looks like he was beaten up possibly by the symbiote, and Eddie is freaked out by that. He's like, okay, this is not right. Uh, you know, this man is an innocent. He's a priest. Um, so that's where Eddie starts in the story. He's by the bedside of the priest, you know, and the priest hasn't woken up yet, and he's like, you know, but he's talking to the suit. Eddie's talking to the suit, and he's like, why did you do this? And he's like, well, he wanted to tear us apart. And Eddie's like, no one's going to tear us apart, especially a priest. He was just giving advice and he doesn't know the context. You know, he doesn't know that I'm talking about an alien symbiote bonded to me. He thought I was talking about like an ex-girlfriend or boyfriend or someone uh, who was like back in my life and ruining it. He's like, he doesn't know you, you know? Um, so he's like, so you're being ridiculous. You're projecting. And he goes, and that's, I, I don't, something's wrong with you. And he's like, I can feel there's a difference between our connection which they actually discuss, uh, but we'll get into more of that in this one and a little bit more in the next uh, episode as well. But they kind of are setting that up. And I, I forgot about this, to be honest with you. I forgot that they actually explained why the suit is back to acting the way it is in this one where it's keeping secrets from Eddie and it's trying to be manipulative and all this stuff. They actually start explaining that in here, which I like. Uh, so yeah, I forgot this had happened. I think uh, Swordsman and a couple other people were trying to remind me of this for a while, and I it, I wasn't connecting the dot. Now that I've read this again, I'm like, oh, okay, that's what's going on. So when he finds out, like Eddie's at the hospital with the priest, and he overhears another patient uh, nearby talking about being attacked in the sewers by a monster, Eddie's like, is that you, Symbiote? Did you also attack this young man? And the symbiote's like, you don't trust us, Eddie. He's like, no, because you're acting weird and look what you did to the priest. And he's like, well, it wasn't us. And so Eddie's like, I'm going to go find out for myself. So he goes and talks to the kid and he's like, you know, what attacked you? And he's like, it was in the sewers. It was around this area. My two friends are dead. We were down there filming like a, you know, a student film and, and my two friends are dead and I got, you know, his arm bit off or something like that. And he's like, but I was able to get away. So Eddie's like, all right, I'm going to go investigate this. So he goes to the, that area and goes under the sewers or into the sewers and he finds dinosaur people uh, like Stegron. Uh, he finds out about Stegron 
and the dinosaur army that he's building. And, uh, and Eddie beats up the dinosaur, sees that there's an Alchemex patch on the dinosaur's clothing, because, you know, it's kind of like, almost like the lizard when it mutates, it, its original clothing is still there, and it had like an Alchemex patch on it. So Eddie takes that to Alchemex, to Liz Allen, uh, right into her office, and uh, he says, what is this thing, and, you know, why is it killing people in the sewers? And she's like, okay, I'll, I'll confess something, you know, um, I work with the government. So this is Liz here, and she's like, I work with the government, and uh, I do special assignments for them, you know, like that's what Alchemex does. And one of the assignments was they got a hold of Stegron, the dinosaur man, uh, who was this crazy guy who like uh, turned himself into a dinosaur, the way Kirk Connors turned himself into a lizard, and he's now turning other people into dinosaurs. And Eddie is just finding this funny. He's like, what he's like he turned himself into a dinosaur and he named his, his he named himself stegron and then she goes no actually his name is dr stegron and eddie's like are you for real <laughs> so i kind of like that they played into that and had that humor there um and so she's like yeah whatever so she's like uh tell you what if you go out and get the you know stegron and stop him and bring him back here and any other dinosaur people he made um and help us sweep this under the rug i'll owe you one and Eddie's like, well, actually, you can help me with something. That's kind of why I brought your dinosaur back to you and not bring it to the Avengers or the police, because I do need something. My symbiote is acting weird and I need it, you know, diagnosed. And he's like, so if you have a lab here, uh, you know, I'd like it, you know, I'd like you to figure out what's wrong with my symbiote. So that's what he does. He hands over a, a tissue sample to uh, to Dr. Steve or Steven. Right. Um, and so he does that and he says, all right, so now that you have the sample, I'll go, you know, you figure out what's wrong with my symbiote, I'll go stop Stegron. So that's where the first issue ends is Eddie actually goes into the sewer and he finds that Stegron doesn't just have an army of like a dozen dinosaur people, he has like hundreds of them. And he's been uh, injecting his serum into cats and rats and stray dogs and all these other things he's finding in the sewers and homeless people and, uh, and he, against their will. So there's some people that worked at Alchemex that I guess willingly uh, chose to go with Stegron and say, yeah, I want powers. I want to be a dinosaur person or whatever. <laughs> and he says, uh, so those are the only ones Liz Allen knew about was that the, that he had followers. And once they turn into dinosaur people, he can mind control them. So even if they have regrets afterwards, he has a mind control over them. Stegron can control anything that got turned into a dinosaur um, or that is a dinosaur. So, uh, so now that's what Eddie's realizing at the end of the first issue. So the second issue picks up and you have a flashback of Eddie and he's playing with this kid uh, when he when you know when they're younger, like they're you know hanging out in the backyard. And this bully, I guess, is calling Eddie Eddie Spaghetti, which I, I thought that was kind of funny. Um, and he's uh, he, you know he's basically they're playing a, a dinosaur game, and the kid is picking on Eddie. And he's like, no, you can't play with these toys. You know these are my toys, and if I want to break them or whatever, I will. And he pushes Eddie out of the way. Um, and so Eddie is laying there on the ground, and then cut to nowadays when he's laying there. And the symbiote is like, look, I know you told me not to do anything when you're asleep, uh, but I needed to fight. Like, <laughs> like I took over your body while you were knocked out and I'm fighting these dinosaurs off the best I can. Um, you know, and they're trying to sacrifice uh, Eddie and the symbiote uh, to Stegron. So Stegron's like, let's, let's inject you and let's see what happens to you and your symbiote. I'm really curious to see what happens to the alien um, when it's injected with my serum. And so, uh, so Eddie and the suit are, you know, are fighting desperately to get away. And they do, they end up breaking away and, uh, and and slipping away from Stegron. But what they, in order to do that, they bust like a wall open and cause a flood in there, which I was like, well, if there's vials of this serum everywhere, Stegron's plan is to, that's why he's so close to the water ducts and stuff underneath New York City, is he wants to infect the water with his serum so it can spread throughout New York and infect everybody. But then once I saw this, I'm like, well, aren't there just vials everywhere? Wouldn't they get smashed as the water comes in and uh, and then infect the water anyway? So didn't Eddie just do Stegron's job for him by trying to escape? But apparently not. Apparently the the vials didn't get contaminated or didn't get put into the water or whatever. Uh, and then I was like, well, didn't he just make it easier for Stegron to put it in the water? And I guess not. <laughs> I guess Stegron wants to go to a specific place to put it in the water. So I guess that makes sense. So, but what's neat here is, I don't know if it's a coloring thing or what, but Eddie looks, or the symbiote looks invisible. Remember there was a time in the nineties where the suit can cloak itself. And it looks like that's what it's trying to do. It's camouflaging itself into the water so that maybe the dinosaurs can't see him, but they can still smell him, I guess. So he still has to fight them off. But he does get away, and when he comes to, he's face-to-face -face with another dinosaur, this time connected to this young lady here, who is a moon girl. Uh, moon girl is a young lady with the power to um, telepathically talk to 
devil dinosaur. And so I thought this was neat to bring it in like a kid superhero to work with Eddie. I always think that's fun. That's probably why Donny Cates ended up giving Eddie a son in the comics was because I think that dynamic, it works really well. Cullen Bunn did that too when Eddie worked alongside the young X-Men, like the ones that were time displaced, uh, you know, young Jean Grey, young Cyclops and stuff. And he did that in that Planet, uh, Planet X crossover where Eddie was working with them. And it's just great because Eddie is like not really good with kids um, and neither is the symbiote. But uh, but when they like team up with a kid, the contrast is really fun. You know, there's a lot of uh, humor you can do there with that. So I like that Mike Costa did that here with Devil Dinosaur. And if you're going to tell a Stegron story, that's cool that he brought Devil Dinosaur in uh, and Moon Girl because she basically finds out that Devil Dinosaur, is, he's freaking out. He's starting to, you know, uh, notice that there's more dinosaur activity in New York and he's he wants to go investigate so that's why they're down here in the sewers. And Eddie's like, look, it's too dangerous. You go home and I got to go talk to the people that sent me here and we need reinforcements. There's too many dinosaurs down here. <laughs> so uh, so someone get these mother effing dinosaurs out of my mother effing sewers, right? So uh, so he goes back to Alchemex, talks to Dr. Steve and Liz, and they, they actually tell him like, hey, look, you wanted something from us. We want something from you. You didn't come back with our dinosaurs. So we're hesitant to give you this, but maybe this will help. And they give him a vial. And he's like, what is this? And I said, well, remember when you worked for the government, Eddie? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, they obviously were pumping you with chemicals, right? And they made you toxin for a while. But they gave you this chemical. Same thing they gave to Flash Thompson with the symbiote. They gave him this chemical that caused the symbiote couldn't fully bond with Eddie. You know, the toxin symbiote couldn't. And they're like, so after you lost the toxin symbiote, they were still pumping that in. You were still getting like weekly shots or whatever. What altered you know, part of your DNA because you've got so much of it um, and had to take it so often that it's affected your DNA. So the suit is trying to fully bond with you, um, but it's there's something separating it chemically and it's infecting the suit. So that's why it's acting the way it is. That's why it's being a little bit more aggressive or it doesn't know how to handle its emotions anymore. Uh, and the suit even, there's like a flashback issue we're going to talk about in the next episode where it discusses what it's been like since Spider-Man till now and how it, it tracks its emotional, you know, roller coaster up and down of how it was in control of emotions and how it lost control. And every time the serum came in, it affected its mind and stuff. So I was like, oh my God, I didn't even think about that. Like that's very clever and very awesome. Um, and that's, the, I think what Swordsman and a lot of people were trying to tell me all this time, because I kept thinking, man, this thing acts way out of character and I couldn't remember why. So now that I read this, I'm like, okay, that's why. It, it, Eddie still has that stuff in him, uh, or at least it, uh, enough of it to where it altered his DNA to where the suit can't fully bond with them and it's causing this distrust and the, the chemical is is messing with the symbiote's connection to Eddie and its own uh you know psychosis in its own mind so I liked that I thought that was really really great and it's it's actually way more uh you know way better done than I remembered it being so uh so she says look we'll give you the serum you got to take a shot every like 70 hours or 72 hours something like that but we're going to give you one shot now you go get us our dinosaurs you come back and we'll give you like a month's supply of this stuff. And after like a month or two, you should be fine. You might not need the serum anymore, um, but let's see if it works first. So Eddie does it, he injects himself. It worked, it didn't kill him. So he's like, okay, fine. I'll go back down to the sewers and I'll take on Stegron. So when he gets down there, Moon Girl hasn't left. She's still there with Devil Dinosaur. And he's like, no, I told you to go. And she's like, well, my friend is this dinosaur and he's not, you know, the, the presence of Stegron and all these people is uh, affecting him. And now we see why, because Stegron can mentally control dinosaurs. And he's, and then she, as Moon Girl, is like, yeah, and he's going to affect all of New York and turn everyone into the dinosaurs and control the whole city. He's like, so I don't want that to happen. My dinosaur, Devil Dinosaur, doesn't want that to happen. And he wants the mind control stuff that's trying to seep in to, you know, to, uh, to you know, leave. He doesn't want, he, you know, just me and him to have a telepathic link. But when Stegron's around, he can control her dinosaur. And Eddie's like, wait, he can what? And then, boom, the dinosaur is now under Stegron's control. So Stegron now has control of Devil Dinosaur. So we go into the final issue. And, uh, you know, Moon Girl is like, you know, running. And she's like, I got to, you know, help my friend. But her and Eddie are like, we got to get out of here. We got to get out of here because Devil Dinosaur is hot on their trail. <laughs> and she's trying to stop her friend, but he can't hear her through Stegron's control. So Eddie's like, all right, look, I, I think I have a plan. Um, you know, and the suit's like, trust me, Eddie, we can do this. Now that I'm, at, you know, you inject that serum in me, I'm starting to connect to you in ways that I couldn't before. You can trust me, Eddie. Like, this, is, this isn't the pre situation. Like, I'm sorry for all that. Let me, let me in this fight. And Eddie's like, fine. So Eddie uh, actually jumps onto the dinosaur, on Devil Dinosaur, 
and bonds with it, allows the symbiote to bond with it because obviously the symbiote can have a psychic connection and it's severed the connection between it and Stegron. So now Eddie is in control of Devil Dinosaur and he even turned it into the dinosaur that he looks like from Old Man Logan, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, that's is, he's running around shirtless there, you know, riding on top of this dinosaur. So just like very over the top fun in this story. I really, really dug this. I had a blast reading it. Um, and then the final battle, they get Devil Dinosaur back. Moon Girl has, you know, connection to him again. And they team up to take down Stegron and beat his butt before he can infect the water supply with all the uh, his you know, mutagen. And then at that point, they go and talk to the other dinosaur people that are down there. And they say, look, now that he's knocked out and he's unconscious, he doesn't have control over us anymore. Some of us chose to do this um, because we wanted powers. We wanted to feel special. We felt unseen. So we followed him and we, we injected ourselves and we, we mutated ourselves for life. Well, you know, we may never be human again, but there are people down here that were homeless. There's dogs and cats that were injected against their wheel, uh, will, you know, and they don't have any, they didn't have any choice in this life. So we are going to stay down here and live with them and, uh, and, and try to take care of them until a cure is found. So Eddie's like, okay, that, you know, that sounds like a plan. Hopefully Alchemex can come up with something for you. Um, and in the meantime, you know, you stay down here as long as you don't cause any trouble, you know, I won't come back. The Avengers won't come back. I'll try to do what I can to make sure no one comes investigate you guys. And they're like, okay. And he's like, so when Eddie goes back to, you know, Liz, she gives him all the serum because he brought Stegron back. But she's like, what about the other dinosaurs, the dozen or so that, you know, got away that, you know, followed him. And he said, you know, some of them got away. Some of them died. There was like an avalanche down there. He's like, uh, I'll keep an eye out for the remaining two or three that got away, but you don't have to worry. I think we're, you know, the damage is done and nothing can be traced back to you. And so Liz is like, all right, so a deal's a deal. Here's your serum. Um, and, uh, you know, and you can now go back to, uh, you know, being whatever you want to do. And he's like, no, I need a job. And she's like, look, Eddie, I'm not going to put Eddie Brock on my books. I'm sorry. She's like, we've done some shady stuff. Obviously, we work with the government on shady things. She goes, but I'm trying to do the right thing here and try to, trying to lead this company into a good direction, which I like because Liz Allen's a great character. And, I, and, you know, she's more than just for a while there. She would like most girls in comics and Spider-Man. They were just the girlfriends, you know, unless they were Black Cat or something. They were just the girlfriends. But I like over the past like dozen or so years that characters like Liz Allen, who's Harry Osborn's wife, is now the head of Alchemex, you know, like that's so cool. And that ties into Spider-Man 2099. So I like that they're doing stuff with these characters. And I like Dr. Steve. I think he's great. So bringing them in and uh, and having them playing a role in this and building a, a supporting cast for Eddie is awesome. And then you know, Eddie says goodbye to De uh, Devil Dinosaur and Moon Girl. And he's like, hey, it was, you know, nice working with you, kid or whatever. You know, so there's like that moment, which was pretty fun. But then, you know, Liz, uh, you know, Eddie's like, I need this. I need I need a job. And she's like, I'm not hiring you, Eddie. And he kind of tells her a lie. And she says, and she can tell he's lying. And she goes, you know, Eddie, you should find a job telling stories because you're really good at that. <laughs> and then she's like, goodbye, Eddie. And uh, she's like, when you need more serum, you can come back and see us. But until then, like, you know, get away. You're not working for us. So then Eddie's like, all right. And he goes around, you know, leaving the city or leaving the, uh, the building and he's walking around town and he comes across a newsstand and he sees a newspaper that says scroll invasion, government hoax, question mark. And, uh, and that's when he's like, hmm. Maybe I will look into journalism again. Maybe I can tell stories, uh, you know, so it ends with him trying to rebuild his life. And I like that because a lot of times when new writers come on books and, and they take the character in new directions, there's always that need to, you know, or want to bring them back to basics. Be like, all right, we want Eddie Brock to be a journalist to do this. You know, I like that they took a whole like arc or two before Eddie even thought about going back to journalism and, uh, and, you know, and finding out that he kind of has a natural ability to, to spin things. Right. Uh, so I, I like that. I thought this run was really, really fun. And I like that it started setting up all that stuff with the symbiote and the relationship between him, him and Eddie. Uh, it's been fantastic. And we're going to dive more into that in the next episode, because the next episode, we're going to focus on one issue. Um, it's going to be issue 154 and it was called skin deep. And it's a one-off story where it's basically some closure between the symbiote and the priest and also the symbiote and its relationship with Eddie and figuring out where it wants to go from here now that it has a clearer head or a, he a head that's clearing a little bit because of the serum. Or is it? Uh, we're going to dive into that in the next episode, so I can't wait for that. And then after that, we'll get into a cool Craven the Hunt story, uh, Craven the Hunter story, sorry. Uh, we'll get into that and that'll be a lot of fun. And then we have Venom Inc. after that and that'll pretty much wrap up the whole Mike Costa run. Uh, so because we talked about Nativity and the Spider-Woman story already. So uh, so that'll bring us back to full circle. And then after we finish Mike Costa, 
we'll go and talk about the symbiote Spider-Man stories that Peter David has been writing over the past few years. So if you like this episode, give me a thumbs up or give me a thumbs down if you didn't, but whatever your thoughts are on this, whether it's positive or negative, let me know down in the comments. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. And thanks for your patience. I'll have more episodes to you very, very soon. See you in the future. Peace.